Hello everyone, my name is Marichira Pratiwi, my NPM are 0079. And now, my team and I would like to present a material about 2013 curriculum. Before it, I would like to introduce our members. There are Hida Ayumade Puspaper TV, NPM 0075, Kade Alvina Devianti Remuna, NPM 0076, Nilo Putunanda Pramesti, NPM 0086, Niputu Dia Maharani 0090. There are four materials that we will discuss. The first, the history of 2013 curriculum. Second, the difference in the 2013 curriculum and the 2013 reviews curriculum. The third, implementation of the 2013 curriculum and the last the method and learning process in 2013 curriculum and now i will tell you our first material the history of 2013 curriculum the preparation of the 2013 curriculum was carried out over several months because there are many things that need to be considered and refined so that the 2013 curriculum can become the right curriculum for the education process in Indonesia. The following are details of the initial preparation of the 2013 curriculum until it is enforced and temporarily suspended from January 2013, April 2013, July 2013, September 2013, July 2014, August 2014, October 2014, November 2014, and the last is December 2014. January 2013 The formation of the 2013 curriculum drafting team based on the Minister of Education and Culture Decree number 15 P 2013 April 2013 the Inspector General of the Ministry of Education and Culture informed that the implementation of the curriculum should be postponed due to limited time while there was not enough preparation. July 2013 The implementation of the 2013 curriculum began in 6,220 target schools. Preparation of core and target teachers by implementing tire training for five days and concurrently with the start of the 2013 or 2014 school year. There were only three textbooks ready to use at that time, Mathematics, Indonesian, and History. Now, I would like to continue the presentation about History 2013 curriculum. In September 2013, Perception survey of principal, teachers, parents, and students in target school two months after the 2013 curriculum was implemented. There is no longer a comprehensive survey or evaluation of the implementation of the 2013 curriculum until the end of 2013-2014 school year. In July 2014, Implementation of 2013 Curriculum in All School in Indonesia In August 2014, first semester book had not been distributed in more than 60,000 schools. In October 2014, Minister of Education and Culture Regulation No. 159 of 2013 to evaluate the 2013 Curriculum as a whole, was only issued on October 14, 2014. After the implementation of the 2013 curriculum in all schools was carried out. In November 2014, as of November 25, 2014, the books for first semester of 2013 curriculum was, have not been accepted in 19% of district or cities at elementary school level 32% of district or cities in junior high school level and 22% district or cities for senior high school and vocational high school level. In December 2000, 2014, previous Minister of Education and Culture Anis Baswedan 
stop the implementation of the 2015 curriculum. The termination was applied to school that had just implemented the 2013 curriculum for one semester. The Minister of Education and Culture instructed that all schools to return to using the 2006 curriculum starting in even semester of 2014-2015 academic year. The Minister of Education and Culture em emphasized the various concepts in the 2013 curriculum have actually been accommodated in the 2006 curriculum. Okay, now I will explain about the difference of 2013 curriculum and 2013 revised curriculum. There are five differences. The first is the difference in the learning approach. In 2013 curriculum, the learning process uses scientific approach. Scientific approach is an approach that uses in learning, which focus on the scientific methods in the learning activities. This approach is expected to make students think scientifically, logically, critically, and objectively according with the existing facts. The scientific approach must follow by the term called 5M that consists of mengamati, menanya, mencoba, mengelola informasi, and menyajikan. While 2013 revised curriculum, the scientific approach with 5M is not only the current method of teaching. If it used, the arrangement don't have to be sequential. The second is the difference in the content of syllabus. In 2013 curriculum, the syllabus components consist of core competencies, basic competencies, indicator, learning materials, learning activities, appraisal, time allocation, and learning resource. While in 2013 revised curriculum, the syllabus components consist of basic competencies, learning materials, and learning activities. It is more streamlined than 2013 curriculum before revised. The third is the difference in the assessment. In 2013 curriculum, the learning assessment consists of daily tests, midterm exam, and final exam. The daily tests do routinely after the teachers have finished explaining the material in each chapter. The midterm exam do in the middle of the semester and the final exam do every six months or at the end of the semester. The purpose of do this all is to measure the achievement of student competencies. While in 2013 revised curriculum, the learning assessment consists of daily assessment for the substitute of daily tests and of semester assessment for first semester to substitute of final exam and end of the year assessment for second semester to substitute of final exam. There is no midterm test again in the revised 2013 curriculum. The fourth is the difference in the Ministry of Education and Culture regulation. In 2013 curriculum, according to the government regulation number 32, 2013, chapter 1, number 17, about the conceptual order of the curriculum developed based on national education standard and chapter 77A. While in 2013 revised curriculum refers to the Ministry of Education and Culture regulation number 20 until 23, 2016, about graduate competence standard, standard of content, process standard, and assessment standard. The last is the lesson plan. The learning process on the lesson plan designed to develop the pensions for reading, understanding of various reading, and expression in writing. While in the 2013 revised curriculum, the learning process on lesson plan designed to strengthen character education, literacy, 4C that consists of creative, critical thinking, communicative, and collaborative, and the last HOTS, higher order 
thinking skill. For the next material, will experience by my friend. Okay, now I would like to explain about the implementation of 2013 curriculum. Implementation is the realization of an application or execution of a plan, idea, model, design, specification, standard, algorithm, or policy. So, the implementation of 2013 curriculum is the actualization of the curriculum that requires the ability and the activeness of the teacher in creating various kind of program activities. Therefore, while implementing the 2013 curriculum, the teacher plays role as facilitator. At the beginning of the implementation of 2013 curriculum, some steps were taken. There are procurement of book, teacher training, mentoring for teacher, implementing of learning, and the last one, the existence of monitoring and evaluation. For the first one, procurement of book. This process starts with providing a budget. Student data, HPS or HIT, Japanese bro slash doc, circular letter originating from material statement that involved in providing a budget. After that, proceed to the book procurement process, either by the educational officer or the school. Then the school get the semester schedule and training for the teacher. And the book can be distributed to the students. Now, for the second one, teacher training. This stage of teacher training also start from providing budget that involve teacher data, curriculum for training, modules, details of course, and circulars. Then, the proceed with training preparation process starting from material preparation and continued with resource preparation. After that, it will continue with procurement of national instructor through a selection process. If so, it will continue with target teacher training. The third is mentoring for teacher. After going through the second implementation stage, it will be continued with the teacher assistance process or mentoring for teacher. In this stage, a budget and assistant teacher will be needed. After the appointment of a company and teacher, it will be proceed to the process of implementing the mentoring. The fourth is implementation of learning. This stage is carried out by the teacher who have received guidance from the company. In addition, the teacher also has standard competencies and abilities to apply this curriculum design. This learning involves all students in each school or educational institution. For the last one is the existence of monitoring and evaluation. After the fourth stage had implemented for some time, next will be the monitoring and evaluation of learning. After this stage has been carried out, there will be some follow-up action, so the education process can be better. The implementation of the 2013 curriculum cannot be done fully starting from the emergence of the COVID-19 outbreak in Indonesia, which is around March 2020, because the learning process should be from home. In August 2020, Nadima Karim, as the Minister of Education and Culture, stated that the education units or schools can use three alternative adaption to the emergency curriculum. There are the first one is continue to use the national curriculum. The second one is using a curriculum simplification under special conditions prepared by the Ministry of Education and Culture. And the last one is to simplify the curriculum independently. The minister said that the third option to simplify the curriculum independently is the most suitable for every school in the situation because it gives full flexibility to adapt the curriculum according to their local conditions. Methods and learning methods. Now I would like to explain about the methods. The learning method is the method that is used in the learning process so that optimal results are obtained. There are various learning methods that can be used by the educators or the teacher in learning activities, including the first one, lecture method. 
delivering material from the teacher to the student through verbal and non-verbal language. The second one is exercise method, delivering material through cultivation of certain habits so the student are expected to be able to absorb the material optimally. The third is question and answer method, presentation of subject matter through the form of question that must be answered by the student, aim to motivate student to ask question during the learning process or the teacher to ask question and student to answer. And for the fourth is the method of travel work by bringing student directly to the object outside the classroom or in real life environment so the student can be observed and experience it directly. For the fifth is demonstration method. This learning method is by sharing a process or an object that related for the learning materials. And then the sixth is social drama method. Learning method that provide opportunities for students to carry out activities to play certain roles contained in social life. And then the seventh role playing method learning through developing the student imagination and appreciation by way of student playing a character both living or dead. This method will develop appreciation, responsibility, and skill interpreting the materials that being studied. The eighth is discussion method. This method is through giving problems to the student and the students are asked to solve the problems in the groups. And then the NIN method or the last one is method of assignment and recitation. This learning method through giving assignment to the student. Recitation is a learning method in the form of assignment for the student to report on the implementation of tasks that have been given by the teacher. In the 2013 curriculums, there are two learning process. Number one, intracurricular learning. Number two, extracurricular learning. Number one, intracurricular learning. The intracurricular learning process is a learning process related to subject in the curriculum structure and implemented in the classroom, school, and community. The learning process in elementary school is based on terms within junior high school, senior high school, and according to the lesson plan prepared by the teacher. The learning process is based on the principle of active student learning to master scientific theory, key D, and he out. The learning process is developed based on the characteristic of the competency content. Competency learning for content development is carried out continuously from one meeting to another. Number two, extracurricular learning. Extracurricular learning is an activity that is carried out for activities designed as activities outside of routine schedule learning activities every week. Extracurricular activities consist of compulsory and optimal activities. Extracurricular activities must be assessed whose results are used as supporting elements of extracurricular activities. So, in conclusion, the 2013 curriculum is made according to the needs of students in the present and is still being refined. This curriculum was created to prepare the future of Indonesian nation for the better. With this curriculum, it is hoped that students will be more active, creative, and innovative so that they can create new things and bring new change in Indonesia. I think that's all about our presentation today. Now we are going to the question and answer section. If you have any question, please leave your question on the class comments on Google Classroom or you can leave your question on YouTube comments. The last, I would like to say thank you for your attention and see you.